Hello, this is Dave from Retired Tire Productions, and I want to welcome you to the Twisted Hobbies Step 1 FPV Plane Build Series under 250 grams, Part 5. So I was trying to figure out where the servo would go, and it looks like, after I get all the equipment laid on there, that it'll have to go somewhere right in there. Somewhere in this part of the fuselage here, maybe up in here. But certainly not way back in the end. So the plane weighs, with everything laid on top of it here, about 217 grams. I had to add back on these push rods because I'm going to have to get to the rear elevators uh, with the servo, so I need the servo rods there. So that's what we got. Looks good so far. So I've mounted the motor onto the motor mount right here with the four screws that came with the motor. Now let's work on installing the D4R-2 FreeSky receiver. So I'm connecting the ESC to channel 1 on the FreeSky receiver right here, like that. The throttle will be on channel 1, the one I disconnected from the ESC. Now let's go ahead and put the aileron on 2. I think that's right, we'll find out in a minute. There we go, now let's connect a battery up and test it out and see if it works. So, turning on the Free Sky Tyrannus radio. Welcome to Tyrannus. Make sure we're on the right model. I've already got a model set up right here. Now, I previously bound the receiver, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the battery here. So, when I move the throttle, you can see the motor going. And let's see if the ailerons are hooked up right. Looks like they are. Although they may be reversed, we'll have to deal with that later. So let's go into the servo menu and change the direction. So let's see. Click the menu once and then page to menu 7. And then go to channel 2. Enter. Then go over to direction. That's direction. Enter and then it reverses it like that and now we should be good to go. Let's go exit. You can hold exit to go all the way back. Okay, let's plug it in again here. Here we go, going right. That's better. Now the ailerons are going to the right. That's left. Looks good. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the elevator servo on channel 3 right here. Like that. And that's working. So everything is working right now. So I've mounted the receiver right here. Just put a tie wrap around it going through the foam to hold it. There's the ESC. And now I'm putting the servo in right here. So I cut a hole right there and there's a hollow place in the fuselage there anyway. Then I just ran the wire underneath over to here and I'll eventually plug it on the receiver. Right now, I just have it connected to the servo tester, so I can test it. And there we go. And I'm going to uh, connect this rod up to the servo, and then the other end, over here, goes to the servo horn on the elevator. So the rod, or tube, goes all the way to the other side. Goes right to here some of this stuff goes all the way to the end of the fuselage right here now I'll have to trim off this carbon fiber rod that goes through the middle of it and then put on the clevises next so the kit came with uh, several of these devices right here there's a threaded rod and then this threaded rod has a hole in the other side of it that apparently can be glued on the end of the carbon fiber rod that goes through the tube. I can glue that on the end, then it gives me some adjustment by screwing it in and out of the clevis here. And then the clevis can be pinned to the servo horn arm with this little pin right there. So I've got two of these, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Just put one on each end. Uh, what they really want you to do is use one of these things on one end and go into the servo horn 
just clip that on but I think I'll go with pins on both ends since I'm just going to have elevator not use rudder so I'll just save those for later in case I decide to use them so I put a little glue on the end of the rod here and then slipped the threaded piece over it and then the directions it said you had to clamp or crimp I should say crimp the copper a little bit well I didn't have exactly the right tool but I found one that was close but these could cut through it so I had to be really careful and just crimp and not cut but that's what I got now and it seems pretty strong so that's one end now I'll just do the other end the same way once I figure out the length of it okay now I'm gonna to try to pin the clevis get it lined up there we go now I think it's in there now we just gotta press it in place or try to I think it's in there now as far as I can tell okay got the servo tester on over here so the servo is centered and I'm gonna figure out what length I need to cut this rod at So I'm gonna make sure the elevator is flat like that and then we know the rod has to go up inside the clevis up to the threads right here so that means I'm going to use this to cut it with because it kind of gets it from both sides okay still holding the elevator flat I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with this silver tip marky here we go it's a sharpie actually silver tip Make a little mark there, so cut right in the center of that mark should do it. That I can definitely see. Alright, let's go ahead and cut it right in the center of that mark. Right about there. There we go. Now, let's see how that looks. When I insert this on there. looks good elevator is flat so I'll put a little drop of glue right there and the glue isn't even in the directions I'm just adding this just a small drop of glue making bubbles here I don't know what's going on all right there we go small drop of glue I'm just gonna kind of wallow it around get it in there good you got to use terms like wallow. Learned that from Jeff Foxworthy. Anyway, you got to get it in there. And then a little bit of crimp. Small amount. Like that. Both sides. I'm holding my mouth right. Alright, there we go. That's it. We'll just let that glue dry, but that's basically it. And if I was to turn on the servo tester, I could move it like that. So it seems to be working. So next thing, I want to glue in the tube. And this end of the tube here can be pretty much flush with the fuselage, so I can glue that right in there. This side, I might be able to glue it up to right about here, but it's got to have enough flex for the servo to move this servo over here so this is going to flex up and down a little bit so I might glue it up to right about there now we want to make sure we do not glue the end of it so that it can't move that wouldn't be good would it so I'm going to pull it out put a little glue in the crack if I can get it in there and then just press it in I don't think I have to glue the whole length of it. It really wouldn't make sense since. See if we can get some glue in that crack. Not putting a whole lot. Now, right up to about there, I'm gonna quit. There we go, that's it. Now, just gonna press it in.
up to right there. I might have to put a clamp on it or something to hold it right there. I don't know. We'll see. This was 3D printed on John's uh, Da Vinci Duo 2O, which has two colors. Looks pretty cool, huh? So here's the nose of the plane right here. And what I've done is I've put the uh, the Eosheen video transmitter right here and just run a carbon fiber rod through the through the fuselage and then rubber banded around to hold that on there. That's pretty much temporary for now, just to hold it. And then the camera is just taped on here with some uh, frog tape. And John is printing me a holder for the camera on the 3D printer. And it's supposed to have sort of a hinge so I can adjust the angle of the camera. So we're going to use a little 3D printed camera mount on here later. I've cut out the hole down here for the battery. So the hole was too small so I just enlarged it to fit this bigger battery. And uh, that's pretty much it so far. I don't have the flight controller yet. I'm going to use a B rotor, I hope, but it hasn't come in yet. But this cavity in here will be for the B rotor flight controller. So this is a Crack Yak propeller that I use on my Crack Yak. And it's an 8 by 4 3. So I cut off like a half inch off each end, put it on the prop balancer, and then just sanded each end until I got it balanced. So it's a little bit smaller than it was originally, but I just did that so it would clear the fuselage right here. So that's a prop I'll be using until I can come up with something else. So back on the CG stand, it looks pretty balanced. We'll find out what happens when we put our camera mount on there, but usually the ABS plastic from the 3D printer is really light, so I don't expect it to do very much. So there we go. I got a foam door to go on the side, of course. So here's the 3D printed camera mount that John made for me. And as you can see, he's got some pivots on here. And there's a dowel that goes through the chassis right here and has a screw on each end. And you can just put the pivots right on that and screw it down. So that gives it a little bit of flexibility as far as the angle goes. And uh, here's how the bid eye camera, the bid eye camera just fits right in there like that. And you can put a rubber band around it to hold it and then just screw it on there. And that kind of balances the plane. I had to move the battery back just a little bit, so I guess I moved it back about an inch and a half. So I took a foam section out of here and then moved it up to the front. So the battery's back just a little bit to accommodate the camera being way in the forward. So there it is right there. And that's the end of this segment. We'll get to the next segment. Part, uh, what part are we on? Oh yeah, part six is coming up next. And I'll probably have some flight video in that because this is about done and ready for testing. So there you go. Any comments you have, just put them under the video. And as always, I appreciate your advice and ideas. So we'll see you next time in part six. Keep your